we're going to get started here. We'd like to get started here. So, it's wonderful to have you all here and to see such a big crowd today. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> no, okay, here we go. I see people still arriving. It's great, so many faces. I'm Nancy Owens, I'm president of Housing Vermont, and we are one of the owners and developers of this lovely new neighborhood. So welcome to Harrington Village. A lot of honored guests and residents and neighbors, my fellow developers, town select board members, bankers, lenders, investors, family and friends. And Robin contingent. Wig Robin contingent. <laughs> welcome to Governor Shumlin. It's just lovely to stand here and see all of you. And you all have played a role in creating this place. This is a great place and together we've, um, I just want to tell you what we've done. We've conserved land and protected habitat for wildlife along the La Platte River. We've built 42 affordable apartments for families and 36 for seniors. And we've created opportunities for four families to own some new homes here in Shelburne. This neighborhood here in the center of Shelburne really reflects the ideals and values that we all, as Vermonters, I think, hold close and agree on. We have a multi-generational neighborhood open to people of all incomes, a walkable neighborhood with schools, shops, services, and jobs nearby, a neighborhood with public transit at the doorstep, and beautiful land and recreational areas nearby. So I want to... Uh, Thank the town of Shelburne for welcoming us and supporting our applications for financing and working with us to establish the Vermont Neighborhood designation, which promotes places like this, walkable neighborhoods, human scale design, pedestrian oriented, a real sense of place, a real sense of community, which is palpable here, I think. And more importantly, we've built not just a great place, but a great place that's affordable. Affordable for people to live in, in a community, in an area where we currently have a 1% vacancy rate in Chittenden County. And housing of any kind is hard to come by. So Housing Vermont, Champlain Housing Trust, and Cathedral Square Corporation are the three area nonprofits that work together to develop Harrington Village. I want to just take a quick moment and recognize some key people. And my staff, Kathy Beyer is our Vice President for Development and Lynn Mansfield is our Project Manager. They had key roles on this project. And uh, I can, cannot find their faces here now. There's Kathy. <laughs> and Lynn. And Lynn is over here. You know, the financing was complex and the planning and implementation took a really a great skill and Housing Vermont is so well served by these two women. And I was thinking about the project and I noticed that this team is dominated by women. <laughs> uh, we have the women at Cathedral Square, Amy Wright and Cindy Reed, and the women at Champlain Housing Trust. Amy Demetrowitz and Lee Buffington. And both those organizations are led by women, Brenda Torpy and Nancy Eldridge. So I say, congratulations. <laughs> but this, um, this great team extends way beyond just our three organizations to the funders that are involved and supported the financing for this project. And um, three state funders were involved in all of this work, and I want to um, talk briefly about them. The Vermont Housing Conservation Board, the Vermont Housing Finance Agency, and the Vermont Community Development Program. So VHCB is everywhere Vermonters are working to build community, invigorate downtowns, and protect our lands and heritage. Gus Selig is here. He's the executive director of VHCB. And on behalf of Champlain Housing Trust, <laughs> Cathedral Square, and Housing Vermont, I want to thank you for supporting our work. 
None of this would happen without VHCB and the support that it receives from Governor Shumlin and the state legislature. The Vermont Housing Finance Agency finances nearly every affordable housing development in the state through the allocation of federal tax credits. Vermont receives over $20 million through this program annually, and VHFA is a very good steward of these funds. This federal funds for housing is shrinking, and the tax credit program remains the primary source that we have to build, to build places like this. Sarah Carpenter is here. She's the executive director of VHFA. <laughs> On behalf of the developers, thank you, Sarah. And like uh, many good things, this property took a long time to build, <laughs> and we really appreciate your steadfast support. Finally, the Vermont Community Development Program utilized federal community development block grant funds and worked with the town of Shelburne to finance Harrington Village. The Agency of Economic Housing and Community Development houses the VCDP program, and Lucy LaRiche, Deputy Secretary of the Agency of Commerce, and Josh Hanford of VCDP are here today representing them. I see Lucy. <laughs> Lucy has a really long association with affordable housing and community development. We've worked together for many years. So on behalf of all of us, thank you very much. And thank the staff at VCDP. These um, three agencies are the backbone of economic and housing activity across the state. You know, and everybody needs a home. Everybody needs a place to feel safe and secure, to rest and to dream. And across the state, towns like Shelburne, people are dreaming of ways to strengthen their communities and invest in their communities. And really, this network of nonprofit housing organizations working with our state agencies, the construction industry, our architects, our town planners, our town officials, all the people that you all represent, we're helping to make those dreams come true. So thank you. So I'd like to invite up Nancy Eldridge from Cathedral Square Corporation. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks so much, Nancy. Thank you all. Um, I just want to second Nancy's thanks to the town of Shelburne. Um, it, it, they have been so welcoming and so supportive. Um, you know, Paul Boney goes way back. He used to be on the CD board when you know I was young. Uh, <laughs> And of course, Al Gobey, the governor's chair of the Green Mountain Care Board, was on the select board when this project was approved. Um, and so uh, Al not only supported state-of-the-art affordable housing, but this um, right house is really not just about state-of-the-art housing, it's about health care reform, governor. <laughs> this is a health care event. So, Al supported the housing, but he's also supporting the Support and Services at Home program, SASH program, um, which is bringing down federal health care spending. Um, I want to thank our many, many partners in this room, um, 36 affordable senior units. Um, it took eight days to lease up, eight days, and it was full. We have a waiting list of over 630 people in our, um, all of our sites, and this particular building has 137 people on the waiting list today. Um, so um, the need for senior housing, affordable senior housing, is huge, and we, we, we must continue to address it because a few of us in the room <laughs> are seniors. Um, this exceptional housing is named after the awesome Amy Wright. Amy? So it's not only the right place to live, it's the right house. Um, Amy not only shaped this from its very beginning thinkings when Brenda and Amy, who always conspire together on everything, got together and conspired on this, um, but she has had a huge hand in 15 years worth of housing at Cathedral Square. 
and has just been a, um, a, a, a remarkable person. So this final, uh, the final product of Wright House is such a perfect fit with the right name. Both are first class. Yay. So the other member of the team, and he is a boy, we do work with men occasionally, Tim Ash, Senator Tim Ash, wanted to be here today. He is unable to be here because he's busy in Montpelier doing things. Um, he sent a message to you, Amy, that he wanted me to read. It's so fitting that Amy Wright should be honored with the naming of this great new facility. I think I know 10 geniuses in this world, and Amy is one of them. <laughs> but as smart as she is, it's her mission in life to serve and better the lives of others that makes her so special. She's my mentor. And the won't take no <laughs> hero of thousands of others who may not know it but benefit from her work every day. Cool. So of course, everything we do in Vermont is connected. You know, I'm always talking about connecting the dots. People get tired of me talking about health care reform, but um, it's all connected. So a big part of, uh, of the connection here is um, uh, when Ted Brady was with Senator Leahy's office, we were talking with him about housing, about health care, about the, all the connections. And now he's at USDA and has made the funding for, um, for the right house possible. And I, I, I don't see him. He's so tall. I had a, no, he's not here. Okay, but the whole crew from USDA, which I think are right standing over there, if you could raise your hands, um, thank you so much. <laughs> They've made it possible to have a high-tech green building with rent subsidies in every single apartment, so nobody has to pay more than 30% of their income on housing, which is the way it should be for everyone. And the connections don't end there. Enterprise Community Partners, that group right there, raise your hands. Uh, they're the syndicator on this property, bringing in the tax credits and the equity for the project. And, and they're not just about bricks and mortar. They are a national leader in bringing housing with services models together. They, they're bringing the whole country together on this idea that you should embed services where you live, wherever you call home. So thank you so much, um, the whole team, uh, for your support. They have brought uh, our Rose Fellow, an architect, Sam Beal, um, to work for Cathedral Square for three years. Sam is the one with those adorable twins. <laughs> Sam. So Sam's the one that's responsible for the barn door that slides, converts the sash wellness nurse into a hair salon. <laughs> it's magic. And it's a Vermont barn door. Well, not really. It's a replica. Um, but all the really cool digital remote diagnostic stuff in there and the solar panels and the green roofs. The green roof is my husband's fault, Mark. Uh, but um, so to protect the site from stormwater runoff and damaging our great Lake Champlain. So um, I want to turn to the governor. Um, when Governor Shumlin came into office, there was one SASH program in this state. And thanks to his support, we have 118 SASH programs all over the state. And this is number 118. So thank you. We just received um, an independent evaluation of the SASH program, which has amazing results. It says that we're saving Medicare dollars by 20%, 20%. So we are the solution to the federal budget, <laughs> right? Um, but that couldn't happen without our healthcare partners. So Fletcher Allen. Central Vermont, uh, uh, the Champlain Valley Agency on Aging, uh, the Visiting Nurse Association, Howard Center, Medical Homes, Community Health Teams, 
they are all partnering together. They're the experts on case management and medicine. We aren't, but we are in the home every day. We're there day in, day out. Um, and so we're able to do the care management and the care coordination. So it's a perfect partnership of not duplicating and filling in the gaps where the gaps exist. So um, this is wonderful. And I talked to Chris Hart this morning, Governor, and her message to you is, She's ready to roll in Putney, Bellows Falls, and Townsend as soon as the federal government extends our funding. <laughs> so we're good to go. Um, I wanted to read a quote from a SASH participant, which was really touching. Um, I think SASH is a thoughtful, constructive approach to dealing with the challenges of aging peacefully and comfortably is particularly pertinent in a state that is one of the largest elderly populations in the nation. It's simply smart. And that's what my 93-year-old mother always says. It's smart. So um, our governor has been advocating for the extension of this funding with the federal government. I gather you're going to be meeting with uh, those folks uh, soon. Um, and I just want to thank you for your enthusiastic support that, that this element of healthcare reform is such a huge success in your administration. Thank you so much for making it happen. Um, and last, I just wanna um, thank many people in this room, the Cathedral Square team, um, in addition to Amy and Tim, um, Cindy and Sam and Miranda and Katie Forleo. Katie Forleo had a baby in the middle of all this. <laughs> oh, so did Sam, so he had two. Um, uh, the SASH team, Pamela, Mary, Angela is our wellness nurse here. Um, our, our area agency on aging uh, staff person, Becky, who's uh, gonna be the, the care manager here. Um, uh, Kim Fitzgerald, uh, the whole team. I know I'm missing somebody, but please raise your hands. Molly, Molly, thank you, Brenda. Molly works for Brenda. Um, <laughs> my husband, Mark, who you know has to listen to this stuff night and day. <laughs> He's just a saint. Um, and to our partners, Champlain Housing Trust and, and Housing Vermont, we, um, we are really appreciative that you invited us into this project so that we could work together once again. So I would like to turn it over to my friend and colleague, Brenda Torpy, Executive Director, CEO, President of Champlain Housing Trust. Thank you, uh, Nancy. We have amazing partners, as you see, at Housing Vermont and Cathedral Square, the organizations, the leadership. I think I'm going to change my name to Nancy. Just, you know. But great, great people. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to begin by seconding their thanks to all the funders. I have to say that it takes a lot of, uh, of capital to get this done, and, and you guys have gone out and gotten it, too. And I'd like to add some thanks to, uh, we also have funding in our property from NeighborWorks America, and who are also supporting our partnership with Habitat. And I wanna thank Green Mountain Habitat and their volunteers for the wonderful uh, duplexes they're building here. We really love working with them to create home ownership. And we also wanna thank the folks at the State Housing Authority, who as we speak are working very hard to get some rental assistance so that we can uh, house veterans of our armed services who need very affordable rents and we have set aside four apartments for that and we appreciate uh, all that they're doing to, to get that done. I want to say hats off again to Amy Demetrowitz who's probably lingering on the edge. And uh, Amy uh, doesn't just develop real estate. Amy develops the partnerships and the relationships that she works on these that bring so much pride and goodwill to us and, of course, create these wonderful homes. And I want to give a special thanks to Cathedral Square for recognizing Amy Wright with the right house. And I'm going to latch on to your thunder. It's the right house in the right neighborhood because <laughs> our organization, Champlain, has a long-time relationship with Amy. And Amy, I'd like you to come up. She would. As some of you may know, Amy has also, when I say the right neighborhood, 
developed so many properties that are in Champlain Housing Trust portfolio and they are the jewels of our portfolio, like San Ramon Apartments and Flint Avenue Co-op and all the first, all the tough ones, all the big ones, Swanton School, Fairfield School, and in case you're wondering, no, not a one named for you. <laughs> But we do have this very fancy tiara. <laughs> Years ago, at Flint Avenue, Amy gave a magic wand to Senator Leahy, and he never stopped talking about it. So I said, you needed a tiara. I'll share it with you, Governor. Congratulations, congratulations. And uh, you've already heard about her determination and get her done. And if you wonder where she comes by that, she comes by that honestly. And you need to look no further than this elegant petite lady here. Jean Wright, her mom, was a great supporter of affordable housing too. So thanks, Thank Petit Joy. Congratulations. Thank Amy. you. Yeah. Thank you. Looks good. Uh, looks good? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you see how many people it takes to make something like this happen. But I just have to tell you one quick story. I went to vote last week and I ran into a woman who I see maybe, you know, once a year when I go to vote. She works for the city. And she said to me, you must be really happy about Wright House. I, I didn't think she even knew who, who I was. Um, and she said she had a friend who had moved in here who was at wit's end, who had really had a year of one crisis after the other. And when she got into uh, Wright House, it made, you know, this woman said it saved her life. So I always think of her when I think of what we do. And so all the people in the room who helped us get here, you know, it, it, it's for my mom and my mother-in-law who's behind her that kept me yeah. going. And uh, then also for the people who need this housing and, and there's a lot of them, thanks. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. So, you know, every development that we do takes on, leaves me with some memories, you know, and takes on identity of its own, even long before people move in, because, of course, we work with all of you who are making it happen. And I have to say, for me, the story of this property is going to be really the people of Shelburne and the community of Shelburne and you people who insisted that we get this done and came and got us and didn't let us go. And that's just a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. It began, uh, in part, I'm going to name some of the people because that's the story. Craig Smith at the Trinity Church and his community, they get my In My Backyard Award. Not the NIMBYs, but the NIMBYs because they said we want affordable housing here and Jane Butterfield, the new minister, has already been here to see us to say how do we connect and, and make a, help make the community here. And already mentioned, but worthy of lots of mention, is Paul Boney, who was, of course, town manager, but also he was chair of the Champlain Housing Trust Board. And I have to say, as only Paul could, he wore those two hats very uh, nimbly and elegantly and, and uh, worked in the right way to make something really good happen. That's a win-win for both us and the community. And Paul, where, where are you? So. Yeah. It's an amazing thing. It shows you that individuals make a difference, and, and this town's full of great ones. And as following him, Joe Colangelo, we have another advocate for housing, and, and uh, great, there have been a good transition with their town manager, Joe. And uh, from our board here in town, we have Roz Graham. And join here, Joan Lennis, your representative, were two great ambassadors all the way along for affordable housing and continuing to this day, and valuable, valuable champions. Um, so thank you guys. <laughs> and speaking of transitions, our new board president, Sarah Meiskins, is here, and I'm sure many of you know Sarah for all her good work. She's somewhere down there. Yeah, she's like, oh, I'll see there. Oh, they're scheming back there. And we had early and constant support from so many people from the Wake Robin community, and you know who you are. And again, you took that role of nudging us and advising us and giving us counsel and then turning out to support at every turn. And you know, we really 
it made such a difference. And thank you all so very much for doing that. And Peg Dyer, this is her with her homestead. Peg, I want to say you were such a patient and gracious seller, and you made it possible for your home to become home to so many. And I hope you're very ha pleased with how it came out because we just think of you and, and the life of this, this land, which is going to be so great that you've loved and cherished. And we welcome to the historic properties on Harrington, um, Sean Sweeney and his design build company. So it's a very nice fit and it really fills out the neighborhood as we had all hoped. And so I, when I'm speaking of, of uh, supporters, I always, especially in her hometown, I really want to give a shout out to Lois McClure who's here, whose support for our mission has been long and wide and deep. And Lois, Lois has done so many good things. <laughs> Lois's good works have marked our community in many ways, but I think her lasting gift is that when you know Lois, it's just made all of us a little bit more generous. And so it's been with Shelburne's many citizens who have volunteered and we met you on the citizen boards and the commissions and all the work you do to make your town better. But yours is not the kind of our town pride that ends at the town line. Yours is a really very inclusive and generous uh, town pride that welcomes people in and it makes such a huge difference. And in that way, it is very a great civic thing. And we're proud to know you and work with you. And because of you, and there's a lot of smiles at Champlain Housing Trust these days, because because of you, we've been able to say yes a lot lately. We've said yes to over 40 families. Yes, you have an apartment. Here are your keys to your new home. And there's that's like housing nirvana in our work. Because every month, we get 130 to 150 applications for affordable housing. And until we build one of these, we have about 10 vacancies every month. And that's way too much no. And so with you uh, today, we just you know, get, get a positive energy to recommit ourselves to the challenges ahead and to meet those needs. And speaking of making it possible, it's now my honor and privilege to introduce Governor Peter Shovlin. And Governor, before you come up, I do want to thank you, too. I want to thank you for supporting funding for affordable housing. Thank you for the leadership you've provided to bring services and housing together and get us to all do a better job. And today, Governor, I want to say to you, and I, I say this very carefully, but at Champlain Housing Trust, we are compelled to work with you and your administration and in these communities to end homelessness in Vermont. Thank you so much, Brenda. Thank you, Nancy and Nancy and Brenda, Nancy, and all the women, all the women and a couple of men that made this project possible. And they all did such an extraordinary job of acknowledging everybody here, including the twins and the babies, that I, I usually do that, but I'm going to pass. I'm going to spare you. Uh, I do want to acknowledge a few of the partners that helped me to get the loot to help these projects happen, and, and it, only folks haven't been mentioned. The first I got to say is, you know, there's 50 governors in this state. I happen to be blessed with the best congressional delegation of all 50. So we got to thank Senator Leahy, Senator Sanders, Congressman Welch. I know that's a pretty low bar, but that doesn't reflect on them. I also got to say uh, to the legislators that are here that, you know, when we're quibbling over money in tough times, uh, and we've got legislators here, uh, right here in your local community, you know how Kate Webb uh, and Joan Lennis and Helen Head, Mike Yantaska, who's here as well, uh, have, have fought for this project. I know Representative Bouchard is here. Uh, Ann Manwaring, all the way from the town of Wilmington, came over. She knows uh, how important low-income housing is. Your Senator Mike, uh, where's Senator Michael Sorotkin? Thank you for joining us. Some that couldn't be here, including Tim, 
He's down in Montpelier. I wish he was here, actually, because he's probably causing me trouble down there. <laughs> but uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate all that you're doing. And to be here with Amy uh, right at this moment, you have done so much for Vermonters who are struggling that uh, this is certainly well-deserved. And I know your mom's incredibly proud of you. We're proud of your mom, because without her, we wouldn't have you. We don't think. <laughs> and your in-laws, your mother-in-law for putting up with you, for the whole family. Thank you so much. You know, I, we did a lot of talk about this project, or it's been done by Nancy and Nancy and Brenda, uh, so I'm not gonna get into too much detail except to say about this project that uh, this isn't just about the community of Shelburne coming together with the community of Vermont and saying, you know, we wanna be the state where we put our collective minds together and brilliantly come up with mixed housing, close to a downtown, with the local community supporting us, with Habitat for Humanity building housing right across the street, with all of us understanding that housing and quality housing for folks who can't afford it is a reflection, delivering it, is a reflection of the values that we share together, that bring us together as a state. And I think it's worth mentioning just the 36,000 uh, level view here for just a second. As I, you know, the, the biggest privilege of my life, uh, the biggest honor is to serve as governor. And I'm reminded of the privilege and the honor every single day because of celebrations like this. I can assure you that other states aren't coming together in a bipartisan fashion to make partnerships like this work. They're not doing it the way we're doing it. And that's going to serve our kids and our grandkids well, but it also serves our need to create jobs and economic opportunity. If there's one thing that should unite us right now as we come out of one of the toughest recessions in American history and we claw our way back, not just as a state but as a nation, it's worth remembering that in Vermont and all the other 49 states, low-income folks have actually lost economic ground since the depths of the Great Recession. The depths of the Great Recession, they have lost buying power. And middle-class Americans and middle-class Vermonters have seen very little gain. So that's what this project is all about. When I go out and talk to employers, four years ago they were saying to me, you know, Gov, we're thinking about doing a layoff. Our orders are down, things are slow. Now they're saying something different. They say, you know, Governor, we need more trained folks who can get housing to come and work for us. And if you can get trained workforce and housing, we can grow jobs and economic opportunity by 10, 20, 30 percent. Right now, right now, we're looking for folks. And when Nancy says, you know, We've got a waiting list that's harder to get into this project than it is to get into UVM Medical School. You know we've got a problem. <laughs> we've got a problem. So in terms of jobs and job creation, what Shelburne as a community is doing, what we're doing as a community today, we've got to do a lot more of. We've got to get rid of the waiting list. We've got to make sure that not only for our hearts, but for our heads, for jobs and economic development, we break this cycle. Secondly, on SASH, uh, Nancy's talked about that. She's one of the great advocates for SASH, and frankly, without her, SASH wouldn't be happening. But to bring together all the needs that I just said about housing and community and living together, working together with different incomes, all understanding each other and surviving and thriving together, we also get the second big kicker that's holding us back from economic expansion. And make no mistake about it, it's the rising, unrelentless, rising cost of health care that is growing faster than our incomes, not only in Vermont, but across America. And it puzzles me why more governors and Congress folks and senators and presidents aren't focused on this challenge like a laser. This is how the math works in Vermont. Right now, we spend 20 cents of every dollar we make on health care on average. So if you make a buck in Vermont, 20 cents goes to health care. If health care costs, as Al Bay, local Shelburne boy, can tell you, if health care costs rise for the next decade, 
just at the same rate that they did for the past decade, just you know, keep spending like we're spending, that number doubles. Now, I don't care what party you're from, what your political persuasion is. Raise your hand if you think that the waiting lists for housing are going to grow smaller, that your incomes are going to rise if health care spending doubles in Vermont in the next decade. I mean, raise your hand. So what SASH is doing is saying, hey, by integrating programs like this and housing and community and getting there with all our service providers together and ensuring that we increase quality of life by bringing together preventative care and all exercise and good diet and all the things that we should be doing with health care costs, we reduce costs, we have better quality outcomes, and we put money in Vermonters' pockets. So all I can say is, big picture and small picture, this project is the reason that we're headed in the right direction, why I'm so privileged to be here with you, to celebrate what has happened and to reaffirm our commitment to do a lot more of it really fast so that we can continue to be a prosperous state where people live together, take care of each other, and thrive together. Thank you so much. Thank you, Governor. Thank you all. Um, I'm going to just take a few moments to wrap up here. And um, as you've heard this morning and seen, you know, housing is so much more than four walls and a roof. Housing is healthy kids and seniors. Housing is jobs. Housing is economic development. Housing is successful kids in strong schools, strong neighborhoods, and vital communities. And um, there's just a couple more people we need to recognize. And, uh, First off, I want to just ask the board members of Cathedral Square, Housing Vermont, and Champlain Housing Trust to just wave your arms or stand up yes. to acknowledge the support behind the scene. <laughs> and then I want to draw attention to uh, the people who actually did the building. So building housing takes a lot of collaboration from all kinds of people, and I don't want to end without recognizing that this housing was designed and built by some of Vermont's best. Um, Michael Vishnesky yeah. is back Woo! here. Yeah. Uh, Jack and Vishnesky Architecture. Dave Marshall from Civil Engineering Associates was a civil engineer. This is a tremendously complicated site. Vest and John Gallagher ably led the general contracting team from Wright and Morrissey Construction. And Matt Wheeler led the site contracting team from SD Ireland Corp. Brett Morrissey. Oh! And Jean Morrissey here yeah, from Wright and Morrissey. I didn't. Uh, so we are going to end uh, with a ribbon cutting by the Wright House and out in the street here. I believe we're going to take a photograph and we'd love to capture all of you in this photograph to remember this great day. So please um, join us. Our folks will be leading the way out here onto the street and uh, directing us where to go. So thank you. <laughs> Okay, are you ready? Come on, you're actually going to do it. Wait now. One, two, three. Are you ready? Come on. Ready? Smile. Two, three. All right. All right. Hi. My name is Amy Pollock. I am a new resident at Wright House in Shelburne, Vermont, and I consider myself to be one lucky and blessed lady. I am on a very low fixed income, and as noted, 
um, housing for affordable housing for seniors and everybody else is pretty much at a premium. And to be here, to me, when I first came and saw this apartment, I was in heaven. It's such a beautiful place and I am so blessed to be here. And the eclectic mix of people and different incomes and families and kids and it just makes it a really, really nice feeling of neighborhood. And I feel so comfortable here and I'm so happy to be here. I, when I first heard about Wright House, which was about two years ago, I immediately ran to Cathedral Square and made an application uh, because I was living in what was a Cathedral Square building and uh, it was uh, a 20 minute drive to my niece who lives down the road a bit. and. Uh, I thought it'd be great to be closer by. So uh, uh, two years later, I'm uh, living here. And uh, instead of 20 minutes uh, driving home at night, I have a three minute drive. And it's, it's, it's made a lot of, of difference in my, uh, my visit with my best friends who are six and 11. And, uh, I spend a lot of time with them and hopefully now that that they can walk here from school, I'll be spending a lot more time with them. Hi, my name's Candace Boyce, and I too am a new resident here at the Wright House. And um, I was very fortunate. I was living in northern Maine, up near the Caribou Presque Isle area, in a little small town named Ashland with my husband for 23 years. But I grew up right here in Shelburne. And I lost my husband four years ago, and was up there alone, and I don't drive any longer. And I was very, very, fortunate to find out about the right house and be accepted. And I am one happy camper. I'm back with my family. I got here on the first part of August uh, after a nine hour trip with a little dog. And they said, oh, they want to see me in my apartment. So I went up to see my mom in my apartment and burst into tears. Across, there was, across the whole kitchen was a banner that said, welcome home candy. There were my relatives that had helped. They had set up my whole apartment with things that I had collected at garage sales. They had collected at garage sales because I had spent the whole winter here. I went back in June, six weeks I spent up there to come back to that. And I just, I feel it's a little slice of heaven. Things are so easy. I'm not having to put plastic on my house anymore, on my windows, deal with almost 200 inches of snow. And the people I've met here and the friends and being with my family again, this is just, it's just, something I could never have dreamed of and now it's it's totally a reality and I am just tickled pink and I got to say thank you to Eric and Pam and everybody else that's been encouraging me and just wanting me to helping me to get here and I just I just tickled. The staff here it was Sash and everybody at Cathedral Square at Fort Charles Ferris Street worked really well with me. I'm so happy to be here it's like I'm at home I'm at peace it's a quiet neighborhood. I could sleep. I'm rested. I mean, it's amazing what God can do when you put your faith, when you think there's no hope, and there's hope. This place is God sent from heaven, and everybody is so wonderful here. I appreciate everything that they helped me with. My cat even feels at home. She's so welcome here. We all know each other, it's like a big community, and we're like all family from the beginning that we moved in here. And we all help each other out. They even have little dinners here once in a while. So this is so nice to be at home with friends and family as we consider each other.